the key focus of uh, today's talk uh, uh, is on ocean warming uh, and the specific role of Indian Ocean on uh, regulating the tropic, uh, tropical variability, especially on the monsoon, also possibly on the ENSO. In fact, uh, the most recent uh, issue of science uh, is a special issue on the changes in the ocean, especially considering the warming in the ocean. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, if you look at the, uh, the effect of the greenhouse warming on the radiative forcing and the heat absorbed by the different earth system components, uh, you can see a picture like uh, like this, uh, which came out from IPCC, uh, and you can see uh, more than 90% of the heat has been absorbed by the oceans, a large share by the surface uh, surface ocean or the upper ocean, and um, large share by the deeper ocean. And the other uh, earth system components like the land, atmosphere, uh, and the ice comes up to less than 10%. So the oceans have been warming, and this warming is uneven. So there is an uneven warming in the ocean. That's one point. The other key point is that the warming across the different uh, earth system components is also uneven, as you can see here. So this has a large potential to change the uh, tropical variability, uh, for example, the monsoon. And that's the focus of our, of our study. So we have some questions which has been already answered. Where has all the heat gone? You can see here. Uh, where in the ocean? We will see that uh, in, a, uh, in the coming slides. And uh, why is the Indian Ocean warming anomalously? We'll get into those points. And whether it has any links with the El Nino. And then this uneven warming has a potential, as I told, to change the tropical variability. It can change the uh, temperature gradients over different regions and uh, affect the monsoon. And also, whether this warming has any impact on the ENSO. And we also compare the uh, effect of warming in the Indian Ocean and at Atlantic Ocean on the ENSO activities. So, uh, Quite a handful of studies have looked into the warming in the uh, oceans, and they found out that the Indian Ocean has been warming monotonously for a long time. Uh, if you remember uh, the talk by Clara Desser in the first day, uh, she uh, remarked that uh, the, though there is large uh, multi-decadal variability over the other oceans like the Pacific and the Atlantic, uh, the Indian Ocean is not showing a detectable uh, multi-decadal variability. And in fact, it has been showing a monotonous trend. And uh, if, you, if you look at the Indian Ocean for the past 50 years, you can see that the sea surface temperatures have been warming monotonously. Uh, this is the annual uh, SSC trend during the last 50 years. And uh, one of the uh, significant impact is on the expansion of the warm pool. So these, are, these colors stand for different uh, periods, 50 to 60, 75 to 85, 98 to 2008. You can see and, uh, uh, that the uh, warm pool has been expanding gradually. And this for 28 degrees Celsius, 28.5 degrees Celsius, 29 degrees Celsius. So obviously this, will, this can possibly change the dynamics over the region. And if you extend that period to uh, 100 years, uh, again, uh, I will quote Dessa here. Uh, she has shown that the Indian Ocean has been fairly uh, uh, having good records over the Western Indian Ocean uh, because of the trade, trade routes over here from the Mediterranean to the uh, maritime continent. So you have good data here. Well, of course, the, uh, there is some uncertainty over the regions over the Pacific. So if you look at the past 100 years, uh, uh, mind you, this is for the summer period. I'll tell you why. Uh, you can see there, is, there isn't much large warming over the Pacific. There is some warming over the Atlantic. And there's a large warming over the Indian Ocean, mostly over the equatorial Indian Ocean, with uh, significant warming over the west. And this warming goes up to 1.2 degrees Celsius. That's quite large. 
uh, compared to uh, uh, global uh, surface warming of uh, up to 0.85 degrees Celsius during the past century. This is a large warming, right? And uh, why summer? Uh, if you look at uh, this picture, this is the seasonal cycle of sea surface temperature over the Indian Ocean. And uh, the blue to red uh, goes from uh, the early period to the late period. So uh, the difference between them shows the uh, extent of change. Uh, you can see it is during summer that the warming is most prominent. So we are taking the summer period. Also, it coincides with the monsoon period, uh, the boreal summer. So uh, yeah. So this is the focus of our study. And if you look at this, uh, this plot, this is the climatology of sea surface temperature of the Indian Ocean. You can see the warm pool and the cooler Western Indian Ocean. And uh, this red is a time series of the uh, relatively cooler Western Indian Ocean. This is for the rest of the Indian Ocean, warm pool region. So Earlier, there used to be a um, sea surface temperature gradient between the Western Indian Ocean and the Wampul region. But over time, this uh, gradient has been nullified because of the extensive warming over the Western Indian Ocean. So does that have an uh, effect on the monsoon? And why is the Indian Ocean warming uh, monotonously like this? <coughs> and uh, so earlier studies have uh, uh, pointed out different reasons for Indian Ocean warming. One is that the uh, weak winds over the Indian Ocean uh, triggers a uh, uh, warm SST, and this uh, further triggers a local air sea interaction. But uh, one of the uh, interesting factors we found is the effect of uh, El Nino, specifically the asymmetry and skewness in ends of forcing which you will see here. So this is a picture of uh, the mean conditions during summer. You can see the Wampole region. Um, and uh, this is the mean walker circulation during the same situation. And uh, if you look at this, this is the Indian Ocean region. You can see the westerlies. These westerlies are uh, part of the southwesterly monsoon winds, which bring the uh, moisture from the ocean to the, uh, to the land. And uh, uh, we have prepared the Elino composites for the circulation and the SST anomalies and also the Lanina composites. And if you compare the Elino and the Lanina, you can see along with the Elino, you have a warming over the Western Indian Ocean because the Elino changes water circulation and induces easterly anomalies over the eastern, uh, uh, in the Indian Ocean. But you don't get a similar response to a Lanina. It, uh, the, um, you have some anomalies, but they are very insignificant because the, winds, the changes in the winds are nominal. So there is asymmetry in the ends of forces. You have Elino, Lanina, Elino, Lanina in the Pacific, but the response in the Indian Ocean uh, is more towards the Elino side. Along with that, there is a skewness in this forcing. And here there are many figures. Uh, I don't want you to get confused. So better to look at this uh, time series from 1900s to 2012. Uh, the red stands for the East Pacific Sea Surface Temperature Anomalies, and the green stands for the uh, anomalies over the Western Indian Ocean. You can see whenever there is an El Nino, uh, you have a peak uh, in the you know, Western Indian Ocean. But whenever you have a La Nina, you don't see a similar dip in the uh, SSD anomalies. But that is not the point here. If you look at the first 50 years, the number of El Ninos are uh, few compared to the uh, next 50 years. The number of Elinos have gone up. Not only that, the magnitude of the Elinos have gone up. So you have seven Elinos here uh, compared to 12 Elinos. And uh, if you take average of the strongest Elinos, um, just to clarify, the Elinos are when uh, the red line goes above the standard deviation, the dash, the da above the dash line. And you can see the most of the Elinos in the first 50 years go up to one, one degree Celsius on an average, but most of the Elinos in the recent period goes up to two degrees Celsius on an average. So that means along with the asymmetry in the ends of forcing, there's a skewness towards more positive uh, events over the Pacific, which will dump more uh, 
uh, more uh, warm SST anomalies over the Indian Ocean. And as you know, the Indian Ocean is a landlocked region, uh, and it triggers local air-sea interaction, which will keep the uh, sea surface temperatures persistent over the region. And uh, so uh, you have warm Indian Ocean. It should uh, increase the convection, like uh, Cho et al. has shown. It should increase the convection over the region. And uh, that's what many studies have shown. Uh, these are from the observations uh, with increased sea surface temperature, the uh, cloud thickness, and the, uh, the height of the clouds, the occurrence of the clouds at uh, height. All these increases with increased sea surface temperature. So one of the monsoon driver is increasing. And the other monsoon driver is the, sea, the land sea temperature difference. So during summer, the land is generally warmer, relatively warmer than the ocean. And uh, many of the observations and uh, model simulations shows that the no over the northern hemisphere, the land is warming faster than the ocean, which you can see here. Uh, the, um, over the northern hemisphere, the land is uh, the red colors show increased warming compared to the oceans. And this is the land sea temperature difference uh, over most of the uh, northern hemisphere. And this shows a tremendous increase. So these two factors should uh, ideally uh, mean more rainfall, but is that what is happening for the monsoon? No. And uh, if you look at the trends in the monsoon rainfall, these are the trends from the Indian Meteorological Department uh, data, and these are the trends from the crude precipitation. Uh, uh, and you can see uh, both of them uh, show robust weakening trends over the central Indian, Indian region. And if you look at the large scale picture, you have a weakening trend from the south of uh, Pakistan to central uh, India to Bangladesh. So mostly over the central South Asia, the rainfall is weakening. But you won't get a similar picture if you take the all India rainfall, uh, which uh, doesn't represent the regional features. <coughs> so why is it weakening? Uh, one, uh, we, we, we compared, uh, uh, we tried to correlate with the uh, Indian Ocean uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, and uh, the top panel shows the same picture as the, as the trends, and the, and the bottom panel shows the correlation with the Indian Ocean uh, SST anomalies. We have, in fact, mixed and matched the uh, SST uh, the SSTs and the rainfall. Here is the hard SSC with IMD rain, and MD rain, and this is the ER SSC with the crew precipitation. Both of them shows a significant reduction in the rainfall over the central Indian region or the central South Asian region. And this is much similar to the trends, which means they are well associated, but we don't know which is forcing which. Uh, we have to look at the co uh, causal relationship. And in fact, the uh, we are interested in this uh, horseshoe pattern from uh, foothills of Himalayas to the central India. You can see the similar pattern in the trend as well. Now, if you zoom into the uh, temperature trends over the South Asian region, uh, you will see a different picture. We have seen the land sea temperature is increasing over the uh, northern hemisphere, but that is not the case here if you look at the, only at the uh, South Asian domain. You can see, uh, as we saw before, the ocean is warming uh, much faster than the land. In fact, over the land, there is suppressed uh, warming or some cooling during summer, where uh, while the rest of the northern hemisphere is warming, the Indian region is uh, showing some cooling, and also the Indian Ocean is warming tremendously. And uh, this land sea contrast is more important uh, for the monsoon onset. So once you have the uh, monsoon rains over the land, uh, uh, it cools, cools down the land, and the land sea temperature gradient over the surface is no more functional. But wha what keeps it functional? It's the uh, latent heat release from the surface of the land. Uh, you, you have more release of the uh, heat to, to the atmosphere. So once the onset has happened, it's the tropospheric uh, temperature difference between the land and the ocean which keeps it working. And if you look at the trends in the tropospheric temperature as well, uh, it has weakened over, over, the, over the time. You can see uh, much warming over the ocean in the, uh, over the, at the troposphere. And uh, similarly, there is some cooling. And this warming over the ocean is connected with the uh, warming over the Indian Ocean. Uh, because uh, 
the warming uh, over the Indian Ocean can uh, increase the convective activity up to the upper troposphere and change the trends over the, uh, over the upper troposphere. But you have cooling here. We don't know why this cooling is. Uh, we will look, look into some factors. Uh, but generally, the land sea temperature difference has been weakening. Uh, you can see that in the uh, time series also over the surface and the, over the upper troposphere. And uh, someone asked about the circulation, uh, uh, observed circulation. Uh, you can see that uh, over, the in, uh, over the Indian Ocean region, there is enhanced convection. So there is ascending motion here, uh, which uh, shown by the red. And uh, to compensate that, there is a, a subsidence, a dry subsidence over the Indian region, which uh, uh, weakens the circulation towards the land associated with the Indian Ocean. And we did some simulation uh, sensitivity studies. We imposed uh, uh, NS warming over the Western Indian Ocean. And this represents the whole Indian Ocean because uh, the warming over the West is in phase with the warming over the equatorial Indian Ocean. And we saw the response. You, you get more, uh, the colors are the rain. You get more uh, rain over the uh, convection and rain over the Indian Ocean. But you get a weakened rainfall as a response over the uh, in the landmass. And interestingly, we were much surprised that there's a, it's like a horseshoe pattern as you see in the, uh, in the observations. And similarly, the, uh, we get similar changes in the circulation as well, uh, enhanced convection over the ocean, but decreased uh, uh, or uh, subsidence over the land. And uh, we cannot uh, miss the aerosols. Uh, many studies have shown that the suppressed warming over the Indian landmass could be due to the uh, effect of aerosols, but uh, we are not sure because the present day models, they are uh, unable to uh, show the exact impact of the direct and indirect effect of aerosols over the uh, Indian landmass. And for the upper tropospheric cooling, uh, some uh, studies, including Cho et al. study, they have shown that there are stratosphere-troposphere interactions which could result in some, some cooling, right? So there are other factors also included in this. And for the future, CMFI future projections suggest further warming of the Indian Ocean. But will the monsoon increase further? Uh, or the, uh, will the monsoon decrease further? Uh, well, these future projections also suggest increased monsoon rainfall. But it is to be noted that these models fails to reproduce the present-day monsoon. So it should be with a uh, pinch of salt that we should uh, consider these uh, uh, CMFI future simulations. And uh, coming into uh, the effect back on the ENSO, uh, we did some uh, simulations uh, by suppressing the uh, variable T over the Indian Ocean, and also some simulations by suppressing the variable T over the uh, Atlantic Ocean in the second panel. So the first panel shows that when you suppress the Indian Ocean variability, the ENSO increases, the ENSO variability increases. And the second panel also shows that if you suppress the uh, uh, variability over the Atlantic, the ENSO also increases. But the increase is more for the Indian Ocean. I will quickly go into some, some of these slides. And uh, it also, uh, other than uh, suppressing the ENSO variability, uh, the Indian Ocean warming also can uh, uh, dampen the, uh, or shorten the lifespan of ENSO. So this, the first one is the reference run, and the second one is the uh, run with the Indian Ocean suppressed, and the Atlantic, uh, third one shows the Atlantic Ocean suppressed. So uh, if you have the normal Indian Ocean variability, uh, the ENSO uh, is, uh, goes on for a shorter period. But if, if you have uh, it suppressed, the ENSO lasts for a longer period. That's the point from this, this figure. And uh, yeah, to summarize, uh, we see that there is a strong monotonous warming uh, without any detectable uh, multi-decadal variability in the Indian Ocean, uh, specifically over the Western Indian Ocean. And it has links to the asymmetry and skewness in the ENSO forcing. And the potential impacts are it uh, weakens the South Asian monsoon by changing the circulation and the uh, land sea uh, thermal gradient, and also dampens the ends of magnitude and the cycle. Thank you. <laughs>